I enjoy making things work and bringing people together for a dynamic purpose to build lives and sustain organizations. Bob Johansson identified one of these skills as the need uh, for the future, the ability uh, to exploit your inner drive to build and grow things as well as connect with others in the making. The maker instinct challenges us to grow. Sometimes it starts out like this. You have great dreams and ideas, but it seems you're all alone. As Johansson says, not do it by yourself, but do it by ourselves. In the future, solo members will still be around, but networks of makers will be much more powerful. But it doesn't have to end that way. One writer says unhappiness is not knowing what we want and killing ourselves to get it. Our senior leadership team at the Piney Wood School has seven people. Most of them were already native to the organization. I was the rookie. The average time that the others had spent in the organization was about 12 years. They bring different perspectives, different challenges, and different opportunities. Each of them brings unique gifts and styles and talents to the table. And we have tapped into their personal dreams and into their organizational dream. We tapped into their skills to transform the organization so that they can think big and create. Like notes in a musical score, from our workers as our team, each person was free to create their own teams and make it happen. One of the best stories I have to illustrate this point was with my director of presidential affairs. She has a master's degree and was never asked to do anything more than type and file. She came to the organization 14 years ago and did some wonderful things within the organization, but all she was asked to do was type and file. And so when I came in, I asked her, what some of the skills that you could bring to help make this organization work? Currently, my director of presidential affairs coordinates all of the master calendar. She coordinates and writes our weekly e-magazine. And when she started doing the e-magazine, I asked her what types of things could she do. She said, Dr. Nichols, this is not going to go far. But now she has people waiting on her because we send it out electronically every week. And if she misses a week, all the parents and the students ask her about it. But that's what happens when we have the maker instinct. It's building the internal teams that help establish partnerships to create an environment for other makers. Max Dupree in his book says that part of the leadership is creating this wonderful array of people that can bring out the gifts in our organization. Some of them lead looking one way, Others of them lead looking another way. But it's a great opportunity to bring people together and bring skills together to make it happen. Max Dupree in his book, Leadership as an Art, reminds us that the first responsibility of a leader is to define reality. And he says the last responsibility of a leader is to say thank you. The measure of leadership is not simply the quality of the head, but the tone of the body. So for me, the maker instinct is building systems and creating powerful organizations. It is giving people the opportunity to go from this, an isolated one-person band, all the way to this next slide that you're going to see. 
<laughs> engaging people to create wonderful music. For me, the maker instinct is the joy and the symphony.